Then I move to this next word that um, for some reason invite me to participate in a performance festival in Santiago in a neighborhood it's Franklin, a popular neighborhood. And after I made the work with Sebastian, I start to realize that it's more fun when you create with somebody else. Not like alone in your study. For me, it's more fun. So I invite two friends to create something for this invitation. And one of them discovered that in this neighborhood, there was a glass factory in the middle of the 20th century. And in that glass factory, there were, was a union of kids, like a real union of kids. Kids around 9 and 15 years old, and they go to strike, they go to meetings to struggle with for their rights, and they were constituted really like a union, but from kids, and it was really strange that. So we make a performance when, uh, from the research that we found in this book, we write different testimonies about, from these kids and statistics about the child labor and child work of addiction and all that and invite more kids. For example, Rafael and Sebastian Go, a friend, the, he's a publicist, publicist uh, other friend, but the tree that create this work, we write these quotes from the book. Meanwhile, the others, they are, were invited to play, like change the logic of these kids that uh, has to work, <coughs> has to make a union, and they invite people to play and draw in the street and have a good time. When we, the grown-ups, we are working and try to commemorate, kind of, in a way, that situation of that kids and the kids in this time that they still have to work a lot. So it was for two hours and a half, I think, we were writing from the Pletcher Street to the corner of where the factory was. And at the end, well, the all the street was right written and people start to approach to us. One was a really old man who was part in a union in half of the century and talked with one of us for half an hour about his experience in a union <coughs> and how he think about that things in the floor, the text. Other people start to apologize to us because a woman in particular, because she has to take their kid to the work. So start to apologize to us. I'm sorry, I have to take my kid. And he was, no, it's, it's, it's okay. But it made uh, like an impact in the people because it was not a strong art or really eclectic. It was really simple. Use the street to make something that all the people can go and do it to. So, some really small kids start to draw in other food like Juanita and Pepe. And so we have this structure that is writing in the street. But people can go and write whatever they want because the world creates this space like a different reality. Most of the people just work for them. And from the moment when their artwork was happening, when the event was happening, the people can actually change their reality only for a few hours. Maybe the next day they look again and, oh, they're still there. Dude. But it's like a tool for realize that the reality can be changed. And at the end, my nephew read this declaration about the kids and all. And we put this in the this typical thing of the square, the square is for blah, blah, blah. We put for one day, it was the square from these kids, only for one day probably, but it was fine. Then, uh, this 
here, we make this work with the same frame from exit to Placer Street, and we work in a um, public school. So we realized that in this public school, in front of this, just crossing the street, was a private school. And it was the public school. And in years, 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 and I studied in this school. For all the years that I know, the people from the public school and the private school, they don't talk, they know a few, but there is no a connection. Both of the principal of the public school, just across the street, like one is here, the other is there, they don't talk. Never. So we asked for the students to make like a station of communication with some binoculars and radio. <laughs> and the thing that they did, we put in the private school. And we asked to the kids of the private school to make their station and we put it in the public school. So spontaneously, I never had a chance to talk with any kid they start to talk each other from corner to corner. Uh, realize they were just across the street and they can actually talk and they think in common. Have friends that, oh, that's your friend too, oh, yeah. And they start to look each other. Something really simple like look each other. It's, it was really, it was, was a problem that the battery goes off so fast because they never stopped to talk. And it was really a nice work to do. Then I asked from another group of students that we, if they want to do something in the border of the school, anything, just to create the, the border for them. And we work with the teacher, uh, the students, and me, but in a, I tried to force a way that it was not like you're the students, he's the teacher, and I am the artist. No, it was any idea, it was welcome, and we discussed everything, and we made four, oh, four interventions. One, it was for the kids, their school was an island. So then draw a blue line and a yellow line to make a beach. Something really simple, it's a blue line, but for them was, they were marking the border of their school, they were changing the place where <coughs> they went, they go every day. So it was really strong experience for them and for me. Other group, uh, the only thing they want to do is mark things on the floor. Just mark to the people can look in a different way the path they do when they walk. Just something simple like that. Yeah. Mark. And all the intervention overlapping. Other, <coughs> uh, they use the, like, the inside border of the school and they pass uh, from outside of every classroom playing a rhythm with a float and uh, float? How is it in float? Flute. Flute. And I can't remember what other instrument. But they make a rhythm all around the school from the inside just for intervening and create their space in a different way than you can do in a school. They were there making the car. <laughs> and others want to mark their bodies in the floor. So, for the last, almost last, uh, this is uh, the work uh, we do with the uh, Colectivo Charco, the group Charco. Uh, Lucy participated through there. And for example, this work, uh, a year later, Atacama, uh, in this day, uh, a year later, was a um, mudslide. Mud mud <laughs> in Atacama, the past year. So 
a year after, uh, it was practically the same, the city. They were completely devastated, and people still live covered in mud. Literally, <coughs> the houses were all with mud after a whole year. And we live in Santiago, and this was in the north of Chile. And Chile is a really centralized country. We are 70 million, and seven there are in, only in Santiago. And we are the most large country in the world, north to south. So we think that the only way to do something about this condition in the north of Chile was living one day in the mall, just like daily. So all in the morning we cover with mud completely. And we do things of every day. We go to downtown in Santiago with a hot dog. Things that people do, but cover in mud. Yes, the only way that we think is put in the same place that these people are. It's not enough for us to make an image about how is this city right now. It's more important to live how these people are. And we go to different places and we draw in front of them. This is where my father works. <laughs> because he's actually covered of mud every day. Every day. This is a bank, uh, a store, and a church. Did they ask you why you They making fun of us. Most days, being like, hey, what happened to you? And some people actually ask about us because in that period, it was the. Um, in Chile, when received the students of the, in the university, the new students, they make like a um, mechoneo. I don't know how to be the word in Chile, the word in English, but it's the make suffer. Like they have to, they cover in dirt, mud, head of fishes. Like it's really disgusting. So people, yeah. People think that we are passing for that, but we explain that no, it's for today, it's a year from the mud slide in Atacama, and ah, okay, and they go. <laughs> so it was more for us to try to emphasize with this situation. And then in the same school that, we, that I did the other two works, we made this performance that is, they're still waiting, that from the, our own experience of being in a school and the things that we saw with the kids, when you're in school, you're always waiting for the bell to ring. Like, you're going to go home eventually, so you're wait. So the only thing that we do, we made, was stay in the yard of the school from the whole day looking the bell, an image of the bell. So the kids go to break and they saw us and oh, what are you doing? Oh, we just look at the bell. <laughs> the next break, what are you doing? Just look at the bell. The next break went for lunch. You stick here? Yeah. And why? Oh, look at the bell. So eventually some of the students, not all, they realize that we are take the day place. And some of them realized that that it was, ah, but that's the thing that we do. We wait for go out. Yeah. So it was kind of <laughs> trying to they think how they pass the day for make well an extreme image of waiting for go out. So we were there. People go and talk, but and just look it up. And for the last, uh, in two weeks, two weeks, uh, we're gonna make with Lucy a performance in the Sonoran Desert about the the deaths in the border. So 
in kind of the same way that the action from the from Atacama, we think that the only way that we can approach a subject like all the deaths in the desert, all the deaths of people trying to cross the border, it's die every time for each of them. So from 1994, today there were like 7,000 people died trying to cross. So we're going to lie down each time from each person. So we're going to lie down and go up, lie down, go up, lie down, go up, every time for every person, me for the man and Lucy for the woman. It's really possible that we can eventually do that 7,000 times, but we're going to reach that point when you can't move anymore, you have no energy, any strength to walk, to move, and that is the point that people reach and die, they can't move. So the thing, or we made this 7,000 light down body, or we can't move anymore and we go to the limit that we can. And I hope that works well. It's kind of scary to do that, but it's the only way for me and for Lucy uh, to talk about this subject. It's, for me, it's not enough to only talk, only present an image. You have to die a little if you're trying to talk about people who die walking. Walking for the desert is the only way for me. And we're going to try to do I hope not die, but you never know. Maybe this is the last time you have to <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's the presentation. If you have any questions or anything, you can write to me. Place, but the thing that I think 
is missing is that more, more people have to take their place and make charge of that problem. That it's a problem, well, in this state, it's a really big problem. So eventually it could be a really great thing, I think. I don't have like, no, it's my idea, nobody can help me. No, for me it's better for it because it's, it's great actually, it's all great. <laughs> what made you want to start doing this? What, what? What made you want to start like taking pictures of your art, like artwork? I don't think I understand the question. Robert, can you help me? Ah, sorry. Uh, I always have a um, kind of a problem with uh, the pictures of the video because people tend to think that that is the work and not the thing that happened in the exact place. So that's why I make this installation where people have to move. For it's, I don't know, it was something that in the beginning, I think, start to take this picture of the world. But when I realized that eventually I have to show this, I start to think, well, how this work in the image that is completely different than how it works in the event, in the in front of the Congress or in front of these buildings. So I think it depends on the work and on time, actually. I think, uh, I don't know if I'm more mature, but I see more things that in the beginning I don't see at all. At all, for example, this working the stairs when I'm hanging, the pictures are awful because I never take care of that. So asking to somebody, hey, you can take me good pictures, I always think in the event. But then where some options open, I start to think in the image itself, and then the picture, I try to take more pictures because they have more like a distance between the event and the image than the video. The video tend to confuse a little, I think, in that the people could know what happened when it's a video. You never have the, that co-presence between the bodies, that it's something different from any image. Yeah. So what do you, th if you think there's any difference at all about how um, kids and younger children interact with your artworks as opposed to adults? It's a lot better work with kids because they don't have the structure that we have like adults. They still, they are not like free and, you know, utopian way, but they are still in formation. And for them, for example, or for my nephew of 10 years old, it's no big deal. Ah, it's a performance, and a performance it's up. Ah, perfect. It's not any problem, and they don't like block in the ideas. Like an adult, it's mm, I don't know if I'm gonna say this because I'm not an artist, so maybe it's a bad idea for the children. It's we can do that, we can do this. Some of the really great, for example, when my nephew uh, is painting my hair, he's uh, seen the introduction of the, um, the song of the Bolist. That's his, his idea. He told me, hey, can I do this when I put your, the paint? Because put the paint, nothing. We can start the song immediately. And he would, yeah, it's. Obviously, it's better than my original idea. Or with Sebastian, he started to lead the conversation for ways that I couldn't lead, or any adult, because they have a different logic. They think much more free, I think, than grown-up people. I think we have, uh, we have to be more like kids. 
a lot more like it's like plain like don't have these stupid boundaries that we have these structures it's the only way for me to make a new society is not fought, fight against these structures because the way they are made they always absorb something the it's kind of the revolution, they always absorb the capitalism, it's always growing up and eat all. But if you are working with different logics that they are not in conflict, just different, it's another direction, for me it's the way to change things. It's the kids, they move because they have a desire for play, a desire for thing a desire of do something and for them it's free it's just free and for grown-ups it's always for interesting I'm gonna do that but because this I gonna take this and this it's always an interesting and all has a cost all cost something and for kids that category it's do not apply so for me that's it's a really great thing to work equally with kids. It's not just like kids and me. We are made art and having a good time in a critical way. Actually, my nephew knew know how exactly the because when we start to talk about this performance, I speak with him, and he was the police is the only institution that can use violence without any punish. With complete freedom, the police can use the violence. It's their reason for exist, and they work in relation with the state. So my nephew told me, ah, so this is like we have a cake, the hand is the state, and the knife is the police, and they cut what they wanted to cut. And it was, yeah, that is, exactly. So it's not like a paternalist way, it's an equal way with kids. I think I'm kind of childhood too, it's, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm going for it. <laughs> well, thank you again for coming. Uh, if you want to ask your question, you, you can come up and ask it. Uh, don't forget. Thursday, October 13th, 7 o'clock, same place to hear Lucy Quisada's talk. Uh, we're looking at Saturday, October the 15th, I think, uh, to die in the desert. Uh, October 27th uh, in Ashurst for Diego Galindo. And if you'd like to continue the conversation, we're going to go over to this place on the corner of San Francisco and Franklin called the, the Mayor and uh, have a drink and talk more about uh, performance. So come if you want to come. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you.